Welcome to another exciting episode of Riding Through the Unknown. I'm your host, Michael, and tonight I am joined with a guest who I actually had the privilege to be meeting face-to-face, so to speak, for the first time, and what she does is so incredible that I just felt like I can't call my show a disclosure show if I do not have this lady on here. And so I am going to allow her to share her story and what she does. So I am going to introduce you all to the one, the only, the amazing Nancy Thames. Hi, how are you today? I'm good. How are you? Oh, I'm doing really good. Trying to stay cool in this really, really hot weather. (laughs) So, yeah. So thank you for having me. I'm very proud to be here. I pronounced my last name Thames, like the Thames River in England. It's really different. And I forgot to tell you that when we were chit-chatting before the show. But anyway, my name is Nancy Thames, and I am a lifelong contactee with interdimensional beings and extraterrestrials. And these this has been an ongoing thing for me. I have physical face-to-face contact with these interdimensionals and extraterrestrials. And my first conscious memory start back as young as two or three years old. And at that point, um, it was simply beautiful. It was very pure. And, I, you know, I had had nothing around me or no reason to not accept it for what it was. Um, the world around me had not influenced me in any way. So it was fun. And, you know, I, I was never afraid or or anything like that. And then this has continued on um, throughout my life. And as I got to be around junior high age, the things kind of changed for me because becoming a teenager and being in school and being impressionable by the world around me, being impressionable by what other people say, uh, I grew up in Tennessee which is part of the Bible Belt. And these things were considered demonic or a mental health issue. So not only did my parents always say to me, you you know, when I was little, they would say, you're having a dream, go back to bed, you know, and, and thought it was just very playful imagination of a young child. And then as I got older, it was simply not acceptable conversation. Um, You know, growing up in the South and stuff, my parents did not want me to talk about these kind of things. So I was just point blank told that you cannot talk about these things, Girl Scouts or school, you know, among friends or even among family members or or anywhere, especially at family get togethers and things, because this is a topic that the world wasn't ready to hear about or, or wanted to hear about is, you know, it was just a no, no. So I've learned very, very at a young age that simply I had to suppress these things. So um, that's basically how I spent all of my life, you know, is just knowing that this was happening, but suppressing it. And it wasn't until I got into, you know, in my twenties and became, uh, I got married eventually had children. And at this point, you know, I was like branching out and looking for information myself. And I realized very quickly that the world had um, a lot of different opinions on these topics. And most people were embarrassed even uh, if I would go when I was older, I would go to a bookstore and start looking for things. And people, if you walk up on them while there's in the, um, what you know the section it's like uh a cult or um ascension whatever the topics are in the bookstore people would just be embarrassed like when you walk up it was like they were embarrassed that they got caught even being looking at these books and they would simply say oh excuse me i'm in the wrong area so that was just you know i realized this is just not something that the world around us is ready to talk about or hear about and it just had to be suppressed because you know um growing up not having anybody to talk to about these things is very very hard it's not an easy thing to do and a lot of people really don't realize how it affects you 
when you're having your everyday life and then you have a different, you know, experience or life separate. And, you know, it's very real and, but it's very cruel when the world around you is telling you that's insane. You, there's no way that could be happening, et cetera, et cetera. So, but you do learn to adapt. You have to, because, you know, to be able to survive, you've got to, change with the changes in the world and and make it work and that's simply what i did and i think a lot of the reasons why i handled things the best i could and it hasn't always been easy at different points in my life you know i've experienced fear i've experienced struggles which you know i've had a lot two failed marriages um uh, you know very ugly divorce situations you know difference of, uh, of, of of opinions on these matters and things. So it's not easy. You know, I think anybody that's truly understands where I'm coming from on this, uh, you realize that, you know, a lot of your friends, a lot of your family that you love and you wish would listen to you, they simply, they don't want to hear it. So it, it's not an easy process, but it, now I'm older and I have a better understanding and I understand every single bit of it, the good and the bad, you know, of all the experiences, all of it was leading up to serve a higher purpose. And I think that's the case with all people that have uh, what I consider contacts or even they consider abductions. Uh, I think with our reaching higher consciousness and higher awareness, we'll have a better understanding that really all these things were a preparation to get us to be who we are today. All of us, not just me, but all individuals, we're all waking up and reaching higher levels of consciousness. And, you know, we are branching out and having this evolutionary big event happening now. And this is the biggest thing since our creation. And we are all simply here and we are all a part of it. It's not just about Maine. It's not just about our country, the United States. This is a worldwide phenomena, and it's affecting the whole world. And the whole world is changing rapidly. Our weather is different. You know, people, you see the words consciousness, ascension, frequency. And these things are key, key things to our evolution, our, you know, our ascension, and the most beautiful part of it is, is that they are here and been waiting for us to reach that point. And that is exactly what attracted to the, them here to our planet. And in particularly now is because of us human beings. We are finally waking up and learning who we are, our true origins, and just how beautiful and significant we are, not only to our planet, but within the cosmic realm. So we're still on the very early stages of this evolutionary phase, but I see it every day. Humanity is just getting closer and closer to just being better human beings, becoming the beings that we were created to be, not the beings that the world around us has programmed us into. And this 3D realm, it's a negative realm. So we're having to pull ourselves out of this program, so to speak, this negative program. And as we do, we realize that we've been manipulated and programmed all our lives. And this has been going on for decades. It's not something new. And we're realizing that we can change. We can change. We can find new ways of thinking, new ways of living. And all of these things are what is going to raise our frequency, make us help us to get to our ascension, help us to reach our evolutionary stage and help us to finally be free. We've never been free. And this is something that is so new and people don't even realize it, but we've been so manipulated all of our lives since the minute we're born. We don't even realize that, you know, we are a slave to a program and we work ourselves to death and we never even get to enjoy the human experience because of being a slave to a money, uh, a, a materialistic uh, material world 
that that's how we've been groomed in to be. And it's not our fault. That's just what happened to us because of our lower level of consciousness. And they do this continuously in half for decades. They, there's toxins in our air, toxins in our water. Um, we, they have us dependent upon pharmaceutical drugs, which are synthetics, which our body is not really, they're not really aren't intended for us. When we were created, everything on this planet that we ever needed to help us in a medicinal way or in any health way was placed here on this planet just as we were in either plant form or in whatever it is here. So there's tons of technology that these so-called dark forces, elites, et cetera, cabal, Illuminati, you know, all black hats, all these different names that they go by that all work to keep us suppressed, to keep us dumbed down. They cannot make money off of intelligent, healthy human beings. So this is a way of population control as well by keeping us unhealthy and sick, you know, and by the time we go to retire, we don't get to enjoy it because we're either unhealthy or sick. So we have very short lifespans and that's not, we should be living much longer lifespans. There should be no diseases. We should have no poverty. We should have free technology. We shouldn't be paying. Uh, we shouldn't be using fossil fuels. And, and all these things have been suppressed and kept from us because they wanted to keep us at a level of that was to benefit and line their pockets and really served us no purpose. And as we get higher in our ascension, we can become aware and say, no more. You know, we'll realize and these things will not happen overnight. It's just like in our creation has to be done in a very, very slow, beautiful process because it has to be done because this is about all of humanity. This is about the whole world. And it has to be done in this slow, beautiful way because it has to be done to where people's minds can accept all these changes that we're going to be seeing throughout our life and on our planet. You know, us leaving a 3D realm, moving into a higher dimension. And dimensions are not physical places. They are higher levels of consciousness. And as we do, our awareness, we depend upon our five senses. But now with this new evolutionary stage and parts of our DNA starting to activate, we're going to be aware of more things. We're going to understand that there's life all around us. We simply cannot see it. Extraterrestrials and interdimensionals are not hiding from us. They are all in our skies and all in our solar system. We simply cannot see it. So, you know, there's many major changes going to occur and it will be done in a slow process so that it will be accepted. And so humanity won't flip out. Humanity will not run around with shotguns. It will be so slow and beautiful done in the proper way so that everybody realizes we're all involved. We're all apart. It doesn't single anybody out. We're all apart. And some of us may wake up quicker than others, but eventually as it expands and grows, everybody will be included. So I'm very excited to be alive. I think this is the greatest thing that's ever happened. And we're all a part of it. People don't realize it, but we all made a choice to be here on earth. And we're going to finally, for the first time, start to have the intelligence and understand and have the awareness of our true origins, our place here on this planet Earth and how beautiful and wonderful she is. We'll learn to have a better appreciation for our planet and all living creatures on it. And we'll understand our place, not only here on Earth, but in the cosmic realm and how our connections are with them because we are all one and we are all connected. And once we come together and become united, we'll be unstoppable. We'll be huge and massive. And there'll be nothing that any dark forces, black cats, any of these things, it's just a matter of time and they will start to fall off completely. And those organizations and facets that have controlled us will diminish because we're going to learn a no longer serve humanity and we're going to start looking at things differently so i'm sorry i can go off on this stuff all day long this is my sole purpose in life is to help humanity to understand all these changes and why 
the interdimensionals and extraterrestrials are here and they are here because humans are waking up. Humans are the disclosure. We are the disclosure. That's my opinion. Human beings figuring out who we are and our place on this planet. We are the disclosure. It's not, you know, extraterrestrials and interdimensionals have been here long before we were. That's nothing new. And I think most people already know this, even if they don't believe it completely, but they know there was things here. There's too much historical evidence. But what's the new factor here is human beings waking up and realizing these things. So I'll shut up for a little while and let you ask me questions or whatever you want to do, because I could go on forever. <laughs> oh, no, you're fine. And, you know, I, I agree with a lot of what you were saying. And one thing that you mentioned that I think is something that a lot of people don't think about, and that is when you were saying, you know, there's contactees and abductees. And I think a lot of people view them as the same thing, and they're not. And so, at least in my opinion, they're not. I'm guessing you kind of are on that same page of there are two different things. And so, would you uh, like to share with the audience your view of what makes a contactee, what makes an abductor or abductee? Not an abductor, sorry. <laughs> Y'all, I know what you're saying. Well, in, I am been doing. I have been doing this for a very, very long time. I'm 64 years old, and I have, you know, been through different aspects of it. Everybody's story is real. What they felt is very real for me. Um, my f fear is the thing. Okay, it, it the fear. Okay. We all have to work on this fear. And for me, the fear is not what they look like. Okay. It is the vibrational frequency exchange between our, our frequency is very, very low because we're in the 3D realm. Their frequency is much, much higher than ours. So when we come into face-to-face -face contact with an interdimensional or extraterrestrial, and most people, it is extraterrestrials, and it, the frequency exchange is overwhelmed, overwhelming. It, it's it's a, a feeling in your body is so overwhelming. There's nothing to compare it to on earth. And when you feel this, your brain does not know what to do with this feeling. It, it doesn't understand it. So automatically it goes, it's embedded in our DNA going from way back to when we were like, primitive human beings and everything in the world around us was a predator. So automatically our brain, when it feels this and it's so different, they look so different. You know, a lot of things are different. We don't understand. We feel like we don't have control perhaps. And this overwhelming fear takes over and we consider it a predator. So when that happens, extraterrestrials and interdimensionals are telepathic as everyone knows. So, but, and they do not have the same emotions that we have. So whatever we feel, they feel it, this fear, this, all these negative feelings, all these things are not emotions and feelings that they have in their reality. So when they sense this on us, this is not something that they're used to and they don't like it because they don't understand it and they don't like it. So they will automatically tap us and put us in a kind of a sedated without the sedation state because they're not here to do experiments. They're not here to do fun and games. They're here for a purpose. And at the times when all this was happening, a lot of times we, of course, when we come to earth, all of our memories are wiped out. We don't remember any soul contracts we don't remember any prior agreements or anything so when this happens to us it's all new and scary and it is it's real it's very real but there's a lot of things that were ser that is serving a higher purpose it was them looking at our evolutionary stage them looking at you know our spiritual 
growth, them looking at, you know, also, you know, our physical health There's certain things that they wanted to know because they've been watching us since the very beginning of our creation, watching us throughout this time, watching us evolve and, and waiting for us to become who we are today. And so I'm not saying that people that call themselves abductees, I'm not saying that their experiences were not real. They're very real to them. But a lot of times they're blacked out and they don't even remember really other than the fear. They really don't remember a lot of anything else. And when you get back, your mind realizes that there's like missing bits, like missing time or fragmented memories. Your brain, and I've had this experience myself, will try to fit in these missing pieces. And because of what the world has programmed us to think, that these things were either demonic or these things were horrible, et cetera, et cetera. All these things are embedded deep in our mind. So our interpretation sometimes comes out in that form and it's not really what the whole experience was even like. And we'll try to humanize it in a lot of ways. And they are a billion years ahead of us in evolution. There is no way to humanize any of this because we're, when you and I are sitting here talking, I'm looking at you through technology. You're talking to me through technology. So for us, technology is a separate entity. In their reality, their consciousness is their technology. And that is always with them. It's not a separate entity like it is for us. So these things are very, very hard for us to understand because it is all new to us. And it is a they were billions of years ahead of us in our thinking, in our understanding, in our awareness. And they do things and sense things that we'll never understand at this point. But they are very, very patient and they understand all this. So that's why actually when they're blacking you out or whatever, it rather than letting you sit there, scream and squirt around or whatever, which could, you know, you could physically harm them because a lot of them are a lot, not as strong as some of us human beings. So automatically they're going to do things like that to protect themselves. And because they're only here to do their mission, their task. So a lot of times we really don't know until later on, later on in our life, we have a better understanding and have a better, we could understand and piece more together maybe remember more as well because we automatically ourselves due to the amount of fear that's involved will uh, block out certain things because it's your your brain's way of protecting you so it's true what people feel is true and what they their experiences it's real it's real to them and at the until they have some understanding it will stay that way and that's fine it, it should stay that way because whatever they need at that time to find whatever way of reasoning or comforting, you know, that's just the way it is. And nobody can t ex explain anybody else's experience. Only the experiencer themselves truly can work these things out and figure it out. And I know ways that can help people to do that because I've had to do the same thing. You know, there's been times and still to this day, there's times that I have to fight my fear. You know, I feel them coming. My body, I, I get a, a, a overwhelming feeling and I know that they're coming. And when I start to feel it, I have to remind myself I can do this. And I push through that fear and make myself get through it so that I can have the full conscious contact with them is where you really, this is where you, when you get to this point, this is where you really find out who they truly are and you truly understand the purpose of all these things and what everything in your life that has occurred when it involves them, what it all means. But everybody here is on their own spiritual path and we all wake up or understand things at different times. So there's no wrong or right answer when it comes to these things, but I'm asking people to if you have had what you consider horrible, horrible 
it's real. You, you, you have a right to feel that way. Everybody would feel that way. It's very, it's very scary, but start looking within, ask your subconscious to open up into your human consciousness and to help you fill in the bits and pieces or help you to understand the true nature of what that experience was like and give your subconscious permission to allow you to know these things, you know, because our brain protects us. So I find that meditation is a good way to help you to understand and to help you reach that level of faith in yourself and believing in yourself and understanding what fear truly is. And it's something that we all have to get over. All right. And I feel like the beings that are here to help have studied us enough and they're aware they have a fear themselves, in my opinion, of they know if they were to make themselves visible in our atmosphere, it used to be two streams of thought would occur. I think there's a third now. And that would be the first one would be is the people would be screaming and going, get your guns, we're being invaded. The second one was, oh, you know, our gods have arrived and we deify them, which is not what they want. No. And now there's the third, which I think is what they were waiting for, is the ones that will say, thank you for waiting for us to come on our own to join you where you are. Exactly. And that's what's happening. They're waiting on us. You know, they're not going to push us any further. But there's enough evidence out there that everybody in the world should know we're not alone in this universe. And we've never been alone. And a lot of people don't understand that. But I want people to know they believe in a creator source and they all have souls and they're all biological. They are none of them are AI. Now, I don't know if the government has done things. I, you know, I, I've done, you know, I did work as a civilian for the Department of Defense, but I worked in dentistry, had nothing to do with any of this extraterrestrial interdimensional world. That is all between me and the interdimensionals and the creator source and extraterrestrial, you know, all that it's separate. And I never divulged any information to them. And I, as far as I know, whether they knew about me, I don't know. I have no clue. But that that's not why I was with working for as a civilian for the army. You know, I was strictly in the dental dental field and th that was it. And I worked on soldiers, getting them ready to deploy overseas, getting them like dental, their dental health ready and getting them ready. So, you know, but they they had to wait and, and do these things in the way that they're doing it because we have to be these things have to kind of happen organically and it has to be when we're ready and we have to know that we're a part we're a participant you know our particip participation and our desire for these things to occur has a lot to do with how soon and how it all happens and stuff so and it's just like anything else. Everything is done with the intention of making it the easiest way possible. So, yeah, it's 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 a beautiful process. And they've showed me lots of visions of like how it all plays out and how it's all done. But one of the things they don't tell me is like time frames, because in their reality, there is no such thing as time. So what seems like I'm 64 seems like a lot of years for me. But in their reality, it's just a snap of a finger. It's nothing, you know. So right. there's a lot of things that we there's a lot of things that we're going to have to realize. We cannot humanize beings or races of beings, many races of beings that are a billion heads, years ahead of us in evolution. You know, so it's a lot of new things that are going to come, but it's nothing that's going to be detrimental or harmful. It's all going to be more like they will be here to assist you know they're not here to change or whatever uh they don't they are not gods they are not angels they don't want us to ever think those kind of things they're just here and they're not here to fix everything we're human we're here on free will 
We make mistakes. We have to learn from them and we have to fix our own problems, but they can assist. And especially as we ascend to higher levels, they can assist more and advise us on all our new technologies that are happening every day. And these are technologies we do need some advice from these race of beings that are billion years ahead of us because they've seen many other races throughout different galaxies and universes grow through this, go through this evolutionary stage. So this is not the first time that they've seen a race of beings do this. It just happens to be our first time. So this is all new to us and it's very scary, but we're going to have to lose the fear and understand our world is changing even our planet Earth is going through her own ascension and she is changing and evolving. And now it's our turn. We are changing and evolving. We're taking a big leap, not only in, in our technology, but in our consciousness, in our awareness and understanding of things. So it's to me, it's a beautiful thing. But I understand it's a lot easier for me because I've been doing this for a long, long time. It's nothing new to me. So, but I do understand and I want to help people to understand the, the real reasons why they're here and the, the truths about them because there's so much misinformation that has put, been put out there and it has been suppressed by our governments and by different fractions of organizations that never wanted this to happen or that never wanted humanity to wake up and become more enlightened, intelligent human beings. So there's a lot going on and it, it, it's going to, you know, it's a whole lot of things that's going to surface throughout this stuff. And, you know, we're going to learn a lot of things and we're not going to be happy with a lot of it, but we're also going to learn. We're going to be a generation of forgiveness. We're going to learn. We will not forget the things that have been done, mistakes that have been done in our past, but we are going to have to realize it doesn't matter what has happened in our past. We cannot change what has happened in our past, but it's what we do from this point on with this new intelligence and the decisions we make from here on out is the most important. So we won't forget any of the bad things, but we're going to have to learn to not dwell on these negative aspects because that's part of the 3D realm. That's part of what kept us chained down and kept us overpowered by negative forces. So we're going to have to be strong and play the role and in, in, in the game that they've been manipulating. And play, we were like little game pieces to them. We're going to have to quit playing the game with them and take the high row and say it stops. And we're going to be in charge of the, all of the decisions. And we're going to actually experience freedom for the first time on this planet and not be censored or judged or, or manipulated or controlled, you know, including all of the things that we consume and put in our bodies, the whole, there's just so many things that need to change. And we're just like on the very beginning of all this, you know, and it's not going to happen overnight, just like the difference between night and day. This is going to be a slow thing because the whole world has to be ready for this. You know, it's going to it's going to run its course. We have to just be patient and let evolution do its job. And it knows what it's doing. <laughs> All right. And I find it kind of interesting is as you were talking, I started thinking about something and my mind started mapping something and being like, whoa, you know, look at this. And what it was is. Yes, tomorrow is our Independence Day for the U.S., which the few overthrew an empire. But on a bigger scale is we're, you know, waking up and realizing we have the authority and self-awareness to align ourselves with who we want to be allies with, form treaties with, explore with, and the treaties that were made without our awareness, I don't know what those, you know, what's going to happen with those. I, you know, I don't know if they're going to be nullified or forced to adapt or 
you know what I, I mean that you know is nothing to do with me in a way because I have the rights to my own treaties and awarenesses and what I was noticing and thinking about was the people who want to suppress us were for a time wanting to destroy all the statues that were up that were memories of us saying you know these are people who stood up and defied an empire and formed a new one granted you know some argue we may not really be free from who we think we're free from but the optics of it of is what i'm looking at and so it's interesting to me that it's like yeah you know what is the world going to be like when we get to say i want to align with that side or i want to align with that side and it you know and will we just go our separate ways if you know we're different allies or you know what's the world going to look like the way it was explained to me to by the interdimensionals and extraterrestrial from their perspective they they've gone through these aspects you know a long long time ago and they've watched other beings and stuff but it's like as we leave this 3d negative realm this is the place the realm of all where wars can occur all negative things can occur as we evolve further up the ladder it's like a it's like we're crawl crawl climbing up a ladder okay and as we go up the ladder ladder i don't know what's wrong with me <laughs> but anyway as we continue up this ladder of evolution all negativity all warlike ways all these things start to fall off they no longer serve us we realize it's kind of like we outgrow those pair of shoes and we kick them aside so we we kind of like get rid of we shed all these negative aspects so and as we continue on because once once we start getting up into this new realms of thinking new realms and higher frequencies there's no we won't ever go backwards we won't go backwards we'll continue up continuing because once you get at a certain higher level or frequency you'll notice within your body it feels really good and you will be a happier you will be a different person your whole way of thinking will be different because you will start to see the beautiful things in the world, not the negative things. And you will find yourself other people that are people you love, even family or friends. If they're like slower to get on the positive bandwagon or to start waking up, you'll find you, you'll still love them, but you'll find that you really won't want to be around that negative type people anymore. And you'll start being around people that are more on your frequency more like you and as it keeps going it, it expands and it's more people like you more people like you, more people like you and it has to work its way through all of humanity so it, like i said it won't happen overnight but it will happen and it, it feels really good I, you know i know when i raise my frequency or even when i start talking about these things i start feeling it and it's something it the closest thing I can compare it to is, you know, how you hear about runners, they'll run these long distances and they get this adrenaline rush and they say it feels really, really good. It, that's what raising your frequency, raising your frequency feels really, really good. And it's also getting us closer. You know how I told you that part of the fear thing is, is that, the frequency uh, difference between a higher frequency extraterrestrial or interventional, you know, they're a much higher frequency. So as we gradually creep up, we're getting closer, closer to being on the same frequency with them. That again will not happen overnight, but that gets us more in tune with all the cosmic realm. And we're just, we're just gradually getting ourselves 
up there, up the ladder. I hope that makes sense to you. It does. But, and, you know, and as you do that, part of evolution is we had to, we had to go through all these negative, bad, horrible things to make us the human beings that we are today. And it's unfortunate and it's not something that everybody wants to hear, but the past is in the past, but it did help us and make us who we are, the strong, intelligent beings that we are. And we have seen a lot of bad things in our past. And these are things that we can finally, we won't forget, but we will always remember and we will make sure that we make better decisions and it will be more of a collective consciousness frequency. You know, it will expand to where everybody will be kind of united in one, will eventually be all in one frequency and what united all together as one, which is what we're supposed to be. Because that's the thing. Humanity was intended to be one and everything on this planet was intended to be one with us. We are all connected. We are all one. And there's also this the saying, as above, so below. These things are true. Whatever we do here on this planet will ripple out into the universe and it affects them. It is at their best interest that we become the human beings that we were intended to be. And we reach these higher frequencies. And because if we stay in this warlike 3D realm, most likely we're going to destroy ourselves or our planet. And they cannot let that happen because they love everything about our planet Earth. Our planet Earth is the living conscious being. All creatures on it are living conscious beings. So we're not the only conscious beings on this planet. Our trees, our water, our air, all these things are living conscious beings. They don't have the same consciousness that we have but they all communicate and our science is putting out information every time you look about insects have a consciousness, trees, water, all these things have a consciousness. And you can also, you know, you can actually put frequencies in like different levels of water and see the beautiful chemical uh, molecular changes in there's just so many things that we are just now learning and our mind is another thing that we just truly have not understood yet but we are so much about us that we are just now starting to understand you know and there's so much in our world that we just can't see but there's life all around us but our lives are changing very fast it's speeding up we are changing our earth is changing and it's that's why I'm trying to get enough information to help people to understand these changes and to help them to understand there's no reason to fear. We have everything in the world to look forward to. We just have to start thinking in a more positive and living more positive. And what I do is when being human beings and programmed in this 3D realm, automatically we're all going to have negative thoughts. But what I do is I, if I have a negative thought, thought, I replace it by two positive thoughts and I work on myself. So you work on yourself, get yourself aligned in your frequency changing. Then you'll notice that your family will start to notice and they'll want to pick up and learn and, and, and be on that frequency because they see what the difference it's made in you and how good you feel and you know, part of being a healthy human being is being a positive human being. A lot of people hear people, other people saying that we can create our own reality. And that is true. If all we see is negative things, everything in our world around us will be negative. But when we start to see positive, beautiful things, we open up these beautiful, positive opportunities all around us. And it just, and it's like everything it's attracted to you like a magnet. All the things within that same range, those frequencies attract each other like magnets and it just expands. And I know it sounds like a lot of information. It's a whole lot. And for me, I totally understand it. But, you know, they've been working on me for a long time to get me to this point, to, to make me who I am today, to be able to try to explain this stuff to people. And I try my best 
to make it as relatable and understandable and not seem so far-fetched. But I do know that we're all here on a different spiritual path and we all have to do this on our own and nobody should believe anything or everything I say or anyone says we should all do our own research and look within because I truly think this is about human beings figuring out who we are individually, figuring out who we are individually, working on ourselves, to become better human beings. And then it will branch out and stem within our families and then within friends and then among our peers and it will start to expand and we just have to let the evolutionary process, but we do have to do our part. You know, we have to work on being better human beings. Right. And it's kind of interesting because I was having a conversation with the gentleman who works at Lowe's asking him questions about something. And we started talking about paranormal because he was like, wow, you have a podcast showing the paranormal. And I was like, yeah, I do. And he goes, so how do you handle, you know, all the information that comes through? And that, and I basically ended up saying to him, so what you have to do is the verbiage I use is what resonates with you. Explore it, research it, follow it. And if something doesn't resonate it with you, don't attack it. Just skip it. Move on. Yeah. And he was like, that's a great way to look at it. Yeah. Yeah, because we're all here, you know, our brain can only absorb so much new information, you know, we're human and that's just the way it works. I mean, that's just the way it works in our in our world. So we have to be a little patient and understand that, you know, we have to, our world is changing and if we want to change with it, we're going to have to work on it, but at our own pace, not what anybody else says you should do, you know, and we have to want these things. It needs to be done organically. Yeah. yeah and talking about making it relatable. One of the things I'm famous for on this show is relating things to movies or TV shows, because to me, it's how my mind makes it to where I can look at it, see it and be like, oh, that's me, integrate it and make it part of me. And as you were talking about, you know, as you become more positive and can't go back, I started looking and thinking, you know, there are movies, there are shows out there that are part of the disclosure. And if you know, how to look at it and know what you're looking at. And the one that popped in my head that I felt like really resonated with what you were sharing was the matrix movies where Neo gave up the fear, owned his power. What happens? He stopped the bullets and was no longer afraid of the agents and the agents became afraid of him. And of course, you know, I'm not going to go over all the movies, but that was the first movie. You go to the fourth movie. What did he do? He tried to go back mm -hmm. and he couldn't go back. The medicine wouldn't work. He, the pill wouldn't work. And Trinity couldn't go back and couldn't let go. She knew him and still had. And the thing that like I didn't realize until you were sharing that was yeah that neither one of them could go back but the other thing was the whole point of the movies was Neo was the one and so everybody again will say oh you know we need the savior the chosen one but the fourth movie there's two and so and three you know if you start to look at it and going everybody who remembers plays their part is awakened can't go back morpheus didn't go back and so it really does start to when you really look at it go yeah you know once you awaken and start this path 
there is no going back for anyone. We're all becoming the Neo or the Morpheus or Trinity or whoever, you know, you want to look at. And the one thing that was key to every one of those awakenings was they let go of the fear of who they were and just accepted it. Yep. That's a big thing. And, you know, that's something that I really had to work on. And, you know, we're human beings. We have to work on these things, you know, so we just have to be patient and, and, and work towards it and it will happen. It really will. Another thing you, if you want to relate to movies, I think uh, avatar is the avatar. Yeah. Yeah. About, they understood their connections with their planet and they understood their connections with all creatures on it. And that's one of the things that I've been taught. And they sent my son and I to Mexico to meet an indigenous tribe. And it was simply because they wanted us to understand that we're connected to everything on this planet, the trees, the air, the water, and all animals. We're all connected and we're all one. And that, all of us were put here to support each other in whatever fashion or form, but we should be thankful and respectful of all the creatures. And we should also be thankful for the trees, the air and the water, because they all provide things that we need to sustain our life. So that's another, you know, sometimes I think these movies were done intentionally to right. put these thoughts in our head to make us, try to help us to be better human beings. So yeah, that's a good analogy. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. And another one that just popped in my head, ironically with, like we said, tomorrow being independence day. Yeah. Was independence day when the president said, you know, his famous speech, you know, I get chills when I think about it is, you know, independence day was the U S is, you know, declaration yeah. of freedom and today it is no longer just a u.s holiday today's the day the world gets together and says in one voice we will not go quiet into the night we will fight we will be free yep and soon enough we'll be doing that <laughs> yeah and so when you were commented earlier in the show about how the disclosure movement's not a U.S. That's exactly. deal or a Russia deal or, you know, an individual country. It's global. It's like it my is. mind was like, yeah, Independence Day movie was mm -hmm. about it, us. It's about humanity. You know, it's it's about humanity. And, you know, that's my, that's my whole focus is humanity. And, you know, reaching out. For my goals are to reach out anywhere in the world that speaks English, you know, and that will have me, you know, and I'm doing next week, I'm doing a podcast in Ireland. You know, I do them in Portugal. I do them in Germany, anywhere, you know, and sometimes they'll, I'll do them just like I'm doing them, but then they'll have a translator to translate it. So yeah, you know, I just, for me, this is a worldwide phenomenon. This is not just about, it's not about me. It's not about the United States. This is worldwide. This is a human, all of humanity. This is a, all of our, this is all about us. And this, this is about us. And that's why I think humanity, we are the disclosure. Human beings are the disclosure. So it's amazing to me. It but, is. And I, on my paranormal show, I, have audience in Japan that I know about the UK I've had guests Australia you mm -hmm. know so it's global in its own right but I have so when I was looking at the show and deciding you know what path am I really feeling drawn to because I felt like I just wasn't living up to its potential I ended up doing an article saying you know what is paranormal and the basic definition bottom line like the core definition that i discovered was 
anything that's unexplained. And it's like my mind went boom. And I was like, now I have guests talking about UFOs and other experiences in the realm of paranormal. And so it's like, I feel like this show and that show could potentially merge back into one. But it's like, yeah, it's, I feel like it's such a gift to when we, and I say we, like, I'm meaning podcast hosts, can give audience the free space to share their ideas, share their experiences, and not feel judged about them. And I also, you know, for those that do put people on their show to kind of mock and tease them, know that, you know, unfortunately in the realm of, and I'm not a total believer of this, but it is, I've seen it, of karma that, you know, your day is coming too. And so, you know, you might want to keep that in mind if that's what you're uh, wanting to do, knowing you're going to be on a show one day and that's yeah. going to be you in that seat. So you might want to think about that. Yeah, that is true. Uh, I think, you know, in this, in the world that we're walking into, the reality that we're changing into, all truths will be known. And, you know, in talking about your paranormal, just as our awareness about extraterrestrials and being able to see them, the paranormal world, people are going to see more and more, you know, sightings of cryptids, Bigfoot, and ghosts, and because our awareness is opening up. We're going to be experiencing all kinds of new things. So not just the extraterrestrial interdimensional world is going to open up and have its disclosure. All of this is going to have its disclosure. All human beings that have been ridiculed and suppressed and told that they were mentally ill or told that they were insane or told that they were demonic, they're finally going to actually not be able to hold their heads up and say, I told you. It kind of reminds me of Independence Day, the airplane pilot. I've been yeah. telling y'all all this time. You know who I'm talking yeah. about? The guy yeah, that was, Randy Quaid. Yes. Yes. <laughs> you know, that's hysterical. But yeah, it's 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 kind of like that. But it but we can do and we can do this, but in a good way not in a right. you know like slammy way you know but it's like but yes but imagine how good that feels to people to even to be where we are today to have these discussions and stuff and you know we're it's amazing that we can sit here and have this conversation 20 years ago no we no. could have but we wouldn't have had the amount of people that are paying attention and we wouldn't have had the government doing disclosures and things of this nature. So these are amazing times. And that's your right. indication right there that our worlds are changing. And we need to be aware and, and you know, get on the bandwagon and, and do our part. You know, everybody's a part of this. Whether they know it or not, we're all a part of this. Yeah. And another aspect of that, too, is I've had quite a few guests when we're talking about like you brought up cryptids and I was like, yeah, everybody talks about Bigfoot. And I always now start to pose is Bigfoot from another dimension. And everyone's like, Ooh, that's a good point. Mm -hmm. Is he only here coming through portal to portal? And that's why nobody gets good, clear images because the portal energy is distorting the image. And a lot of people are now starting to like redefine spirits of are they a parallel timeline yeah that we're seeing so it's like yeah even the paranormal world is really starting to unravel itself and go everything is now on the table it's a no holds bar we are free to investigate everything yes our world is changing so many things uh, you know, but the beautiful part is, is that it will not be scary or the shell shock like it was 
10 years ago or 20 years ago, we are going to have a better understanding of these things and it will not be so abnormal anymore. It'll just be the paranormal, <laughs> you know. I have a question for you that's a personal experience of mine. Sure. And it's kind of come because I've had guests who talk about light ships and they show them in the clouds and or UFOs, as you may call them. And every once in a while, I look up when I'm in the pool and there'll be like one cloud that just seems larger or fluffier than the rest. And it feels like it's coming towards me. It's like I look at it and it's like the only cloud coming towards me. The other clouds, they're just hanging out. And so I've often wondered, is that a ship? And that's why the cloud is moving differently to say, hey, we're here, just letting you know. Yeah. Um, you know, as we reach higher frequencies, our awareness increases. So really and truly, that ship is not hiding from you, but you're getting glints of it because your frequency is changing and you're getting closer to their frequency. And that's why you're seeing it and other people might not, you know. Uh, so, yeah, it's real. And yeah, they're they they are very aware when when people are picking up on it because as as if you're picking up on it, you can imagine they are because they're billions of years ahead of us, and they 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 can read our frequencies, you know, big time, and that's what they really watch is to see the frequency, how we're you know how close we are getting to reaching our ascension, how close we are getting to our evolutionary step. So they see that and they love that, you know, that's, that's progress for humanity is really what it is. So yeah, that's real. And it's interesting how you mentioned the ascension and how we're progressing on it is I have thoughts in my head of we're in third density and fifth density is next 5d is our next evolutionary. And someone said to me recently goes, well, what are you doing about the fourth? And I was like, we're skipping the fourth. Well, why are we skipping the fourth? Well, I've heard a lot of people say we're skipping the fourth. Who said that? And I'll mention names are like, they never said that. And so it's like, it makes me wonder like, you know, why am I like all of a sudden starting to think of circumventing one to go to another level versus going step by step. And are we going to go into four D? We're, we're, we're already in four, but these things are so gradual and it has to be done this way for our minds to be able to understand it. And like I told you, you know, di dimensions are not physical places. It's higher levels of consciousness. So, right. and, it, and it happens so uniquely purposely done so that it is not a sh shell shock and people don't freak out. And it has to give the mind a time, the mind, the ab amount of time it needs to adapt. So we're already in the fourth dimension and we are going up to the fifth. And the how you will know is this, the fact that your awareness and you'll find that you are becoming a more positive human being. You will un you'll see the difference in the people around you, their decisions, their their actions, the, their perspective on things will change, and they'll be a happier human being. For one, and I mean, even the most negative person will all of a sudden will shock you and become a more positive human being because. As you increase your frequency, it does. It feels really good. And it's like your body, your soul is re is rewarding yourself for reaching these levels because your soul has been sitting in this vessel we are in, just waiting for this human consciousness to finally catch up because that's why your soul self, your inner self chose to come here and be here for this experience because this is big and this is even though for us here in our human form this is all new and everything 
But before we ever got here, we already knew what we were coming here for. And this is part of our main purpose of being here. This is a big step. And once you get in and start understanding the spiritual realms and the cosmic realms, you'll understand how significant is this is. Think about all of the humanity in the past that didn't hit this final level. For example, let me, I'll give you an example they gave me. You know how in the Bible, it talks about the shiny ones. Right. And it mentions like the shiny ones. So the way that they explained it to me, because interdimensionals compared to the extraterrestrials, they appear, when I see them in face-to-face contact, they appear to me as a shiny one. They're almost luminescent. They're real uh, opalescent looking, beautiful, uh, and they're eight to seven foot tall. They're opalescent and they're real shiny, kind of opalescent. So the way they explained to me, and because I wanted to know why do y'all look so different from grays or reptilians or Nordics, Arturians, et cetera, et cetera. And so if they took me and you, teleported us back to biblical times in that time period when those people were looking, you know, would look at us, they would see you and I as the shiny ones because we are of a higher frequency and we are above them now, you know, and what their, what they, their consciousness level and at their period of time and their awareness and understanding was way below us. So we would actually be the shiny ones to them. So that kind of gives you some clarity on how back in the old days, a lot of these things were kind of misunderstood because they didn't know any different. They didn't have anything to compare it to. Their understandings weren't at the level that ours are today, you know. So that's how they kind of explained it to me. It's just, you know, it's it's a matter of evolution and it's a matter of higher frequencies, vibrational frequencies, and it's like consci- higher consciousness makes all the difference in these stepping up to these realms. And, and they're not physical places. It's more like just kind of like, you know, like little stacks on each other. And they're right there on each other. But this one can't see that one because he's not to that level yet. But right. as you get closer to it, your awareness and you open up and you're more aware to see more things and understand more things. That's kind of, that's how they explained it to me. I hope that makes any sense. It makes sense. It does. And it actually triggered my mind to thinking something along the lines of that was a friend of mine, William Henry, was starting to teach, you know, we're all looking for this box, the Ark of the Covenant. Mm -hmm. Well, what we don't realize is we're supposed to look within. It's within us. We are the Ark. It's not a box that's sitting in a cave somewhere waiting for everyone to go okay you know it's time now here i am and i actually started thinking about it a step further because you were you pointed out going back to the garden of eden and yes being the shiny one there and i was like well what if the garden of eden with the tree of knowledge is not a place but again is us exactly that's why i keep telling you we are the disclosure. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it just makes sense, doesn't it? I mean, we are what the whole, we are what this generation, we are the generation of human beings that the world and the universe and every living creature on our planet has been waiting on for us to finally wake up and understand who we are and understand all these you know, there's things in our DNA that's never even been used, you know, and these things are going to start to wake up and we are going to have learned things about ourselves and under and have more abilities and things. It's going to be amazing because we are we are the disclosure. We are going to understand things about ourselves and our mind and all, you know, we have the potential to even heal ourselves. We have the potential to do so many things. And it all stems on our waking up. 
and coming together as one and understanding that by being united, we are unstoppable and no dark forces or evil forces can ever, ever control us again. Because once you get go forward into the next levels of evolution, it's it's all the way. It's it's all the way up the ladder. It's all the way up. There is no going backwards. There is no going backwards. We right. just got to get past this 3D ram where all this negativity and stuff is. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and it's funny because everybody was taught growing up, you know, if you want to hide something, put it in plain sight because nobody ever looks there. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm sitting here now thinking like yeah. all these ancient stories that have been used i forget what the term they use them for but as stories for us to grow on and learn from but like the tower of babel again could be us communicating with the divine ones our set and ourselves being on that level talking with them and they dispersed us and so how do you keep us from remembering that Tell us it's a location somewhere that's hidden, and we, being the seekers that we are, will spend a lot of time looking for it instead of looking within to go, oh, exactly. wait a minute, <laughs> right here under my nose, literally. Yeah. A lot of things that they've taught me are things, are, and what they say is, we already know, and they've always told me throughout my life, you already know, and I'm like, what? You know, but I see it. There's so much up in within us, within us. And once we get those things figured out and, and understand who we for me, see, I wanted I wanted to know and I still work on it. Well, you know, every day is a new experience. We're always gonna be learning new things. Nobody knows everything. Right. You know. That, that's just a simple fact. The more you know, the more you realize, there, the more there is to learn and know. But like, I wanted to know the Nancy within, not the Nancy that the world around me has created me and led me around like a horse or whatever, you know, pulled me around and doing this nine to five, you know, doing this, that, and the other, the material world, the all this. I had to go within go within, find who do, my soul self, my inner self, the one that chose to come to earth, the one that has a mission and is here for a reason. And the way that I did that was through their help, which they gave me a Kundalini, gifted me a Kundalini awakening, which opened my subconscious up into my human consciousness, but also me working on myself, asking my subconscious to open up to my human consciousness and meditating and asking to, you know, please allow me, share with me what you know to my inner self and bring it forward because our world is changing and we all need a little assistance. And there's nothing wrong with asking your inner self to come forward and help you. And I think that's part of it is us figuring out who we are. And when we figure out who we are, then everything else is going to fall into place. Yeah. Right. And one of the things too, I find that's kind of, I was just thinking in my head would be a funny moment and realizing why everything isn't just laid out for us is those of us who astral travel. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you travel basically almost by speed of thought. And if we started doing that here, you know, how we would be taking advantage of it and being like, ooh, you know, look at what I can do and start showing off and start doing And it's like we would forget why we had that gift. And so I feel like, mm -hmm. yeah, you know, they slow that process down, too, to where when we're ready and willing to accept it, as the gift it is and use it so i'll suddenly be able to travel by speed of thought somewhere and be like hey here i am you know let me help let's do this 
and then go to the next spot and not just be like jumping over to go, ha ha, I made yeah. it across the sea with two seconds. Yeah. Yeah. We're like little children to them. You know, we're, we're the, one of the youngest beings. We are, I guess, the youngest. Well, we are the youngest beings within the universe, in our universe, in other universes. But And we are like right now, we are like top priority because we're just so close. We're so close to our ascension, so close to our big evolutionary jump. And they are here in huge numbers and in motorships watching. And I'm not talking about just one race or two races. All of them are here waiting and watching on us because they've been, this is something that they've been waiting on for a very, very long time. And, you know, it, it's a beautiful thing. And they're very thrilled, very thrilled. And these people that think, oh, they want to take over, blah, blah, blah. If they wanted to do things like that, it would have already happened. <laughs> you know? right. and yeah. One of the things, too, that I think is kind of important to note is not only are we becoming aware of who we are, but we're also becoming aware of where we come from. Exactly. And I don't mean, you know, the stork or, you know, through a moment of, you know, intimacy, you know, is what created us. No, we stem from further out and we're not, you know, I, I have the feeling a pure earthling would be rare on earth. Yeah. You know, we all are mixed and they're coming because we're now becoming aware of we're hybrids. We're not yeah. just this. And that part is waking up. So I feel like they're here. Well, they're family. To be like, hey, now that you're aware that you're one of us, let us help you understand what that means and exactly. what mm -hmm. that'll bring forth for you. Yeah, we're, you know, they call it junk DNA. It's not junk DNA. No. <laughs> you know, we're all, you know, they played a part in our creation and they do not claim to have done it all. From what I understand, we are a, we are many different races. We were designed from many different races. We have a little each of all, you know, I don't know the exact number, but we are a combination of, many races so we have lots of family in the cosmic realm and they're all just excited and happy and and been waiting for us to get to this level of consciousness and understanding and awareness and this will get us closer to having um direct earthbound contact but but we have to get rid of our fear and we have to work on you know, just becoming better human beings and raising our frequencies. Because if you think about it, if we raise our frequencies, that gets us closer to their frequency. And that makes it easier for us. It won't be as overwhelming as it is right now. You know, and, I agree. And yeah, I had a us with our fear. It will help us. Yeah. Right. And it's interesting, like you pointed out earlier, this is the only place where there's war and everything. And I was taught, because I grew up through metaphysics, not dogma. And one of my metaphysic teachers pointed out and said, you know, you have to look at Earth not as a planet of we're just people here going through the human experience. This is like school. This is a proving ground, or this is where you're going to learn your lessons so that you could take it back to your people and share your experience here with them there mm -hmm. that they can experience. And that was the gift that you chose when you decided to come here. And it's like, when you think about that and look at that, you're like, whoa, wait a minute. Yeah, Life is, just got a whole new meaning. <laughs> it really does. And, and, you know, it's it's been a very eye-opening experience for me because what I was taught growing up 
a lot of that just is not the reality of what it's really like. And for me, I'm happier human being than I've ever been because I know who I am. I know where I came from. I know when I leave this vessel exactly where my consciousness and my soul are going. And my life does not, my the body, I'm, I won't be in this body, but my soul and my consciousness are immortal. And they're can, multidimensional. It can go anywhere, be anything. You know, if I've, I do believe that we do make soul contracts and stuff. And if we've met all of these agreements, we have so many choices, you know, this is just a, a, a mere small experience compared to the infinite amount of experiences that we are yet to have because it's infinite and the universe and galaxies are infinite. It's just so much out there. And this is just a little small tidbit of what it is in that cosmic realm. And, and this is just a human experience and, you know, why our soul and consciousness does not, it, it moves on. It moves on most definitely. Yeah. Right. And another thing I think that will amaze people when they think about it is we kind of hinted at it was time is not a natural construct. No. And what brought my true awareness to that was so like daylight savings there are places in america where daylight savings doesn't go in effect so if it doesn't go in effect and there's no time change how is there time to start with because how do we determine when it changes doesn't change and the fact that the uk changes you know before we do to start daylight savings, but it was weeks after us to end daylight savings. And I'm like, wait a minute. If time was natural, we would all do it at the same time. Yeah. And the one that cracked me up the most is I did an interview with the lady um, JV in Canada on the East Coast. And she goes, yes, we're going to start at um, six o'clock your time and it'll be 7 30 my time and I was like wait how is it 7 30 because eastern is one hour yeah and it's done by hours and she goes no we do it by you know we have that extra half hour that we take into account I'm like what <laughs> oh like, yeah. yeah I really does not exist here <laughs> yeah <laughs> I know it's, so it's, it's crazy and that we 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 really don't even realize how much our lives are manipulated by these things. And we made them, you know, humanity, somebody, I don't know who made all these things up to serve their narrative, to serve their agenda. Nothing was ever, I don't think was really done with the intention of, of benefiting us. It was to line pocketbooks. You know, it was like yeah. about keeping us working at certain times a day to generate more money, you know? So yeah. it's really, it's bizarre. It's really bizarre because as much beautiful things that we see and, and want to see, there's a lot of negative things that we were taking advantage of because of our lower consciousness. We were told that this is the way things have been. And we just say, okay, okay. Yeah. And yeah. we just, do it you know it's like yeah. they tell us the light bright part and behind that is like maybe five or six bad things but we're like oh but this is such a great thing so yes we'll do it and it's like wait a minute we don't pay attention to what they're attaching to that and that's where we get into a lot of trouble is mm -hmm. they're like you agreed to it and we're like we didn't you didn't tell us about that and it's like you didn't ask you either didn't ask. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah it's a crazy yeah. yeah well we're actually approaching an hour and a half wow well, yeah it's i'm funny. a talker <laughs> No, I appreciate it, and I, I enjoyed the information, and it's given me a lot to think about, and I enjoyed the conversation, and 
where can people find you if they have questions for you about disclosure or if they where they are in disclosure? My website is timefordisclosure.com and my Facebook group is time for disclosure slash we have never been alone slash we are the disclosure because I truly believe humanity is human beings are the disclosure. Um, then, you know, I'm, I belong to so many groups on Facebook. You know, I love them all. And I think they're all working towards the same thing. We all want to see humanity benefit and we want to know truths and answers. We want to know our true origins. We want to know so many things and we're tired of being lied to. So, I think there's a lot of beautiful places. So I'm, I, I can be found anywhere on that. Um, and, um, you know, so thank you for having me. I appreciate it because I couldn't do what I'm doing. And it's very important to me without people like you that allow me to come on their show. So thank you very much. Thank you. Well, you're welcome. And I always like to say, especially with first time guests and, everything is thank you for trusting me enough to come on because i know there are different type of shows and you you can only hope what you're hoping True. will happen is what's coming and so thank you for trusting in me to come on and so wrapping up one thing i like to do is because we all have these great experiences and such a wealth of knowledge. For those that are watching this show, what is one golden nugget from your life experiences, Nancy, you would want someone to really hear and plant that seed of for them? One thing that has always stood out with me is what the interdimensional said to me when I was in Mexico with my oldest son and they took their hands out like this and they said, everything is alive. Everything is alive. And when they did their hands like this, all of a sudden I could see trees talking to each other, plants talking to each other. All these things were communicating and our tree was laughing at me. And I asked the interdimensional, why is that tree laughing at me? He goes, he's not laughing at you. He's laughing at humanity. And I'm like, why? He said, because humans run around chopping them down, trees, chopping them down. And we never stop and appreciate the fact they provide the air that we breathe. They provide all the wood that you use to build your homes or to comfort yourself when you're cold. They provide nuts. They provide fruit. They provide all these things. And we have no appreciation for them at all and no understanding that they are a living conscious being. And they do not mind sharing their things with us, but they would like for us to appreciate their gifts to us. So for me, that was a major thing because just like any other human being, you know, a tree was something that I climbed in. A tree was, was something that I hung, a, my parents hung a, a swing in. And I never really just thought about it, but being a living conscious being. So, I want people to understand that we were all, all things when we were all created was put here on this planet and we are all one. We are all one and we are all connected and we are all here to support each other. And that doesn't mean that we're not supposed to eat vegetables or, or all these things. They are here to share with us and support us. But it does mean that if given the opportunity that we look at it and appreciate it a little bit differently. And maybe instead of chopping down the whole tree, maybe we just take what we need, or maybe we figure out other ways to not destroy our environment and our world. And, you know, I think we'll find that when we're good to our planet earth, she will in return be wonderful and beautiful to us because we will be, a, our connection will be complete and our world will be a much better place. I agree. And like you were saying with the trees, one thing I think that they might do is because, you know, they mark which trees they're going to take and when is instead of waiting till the tree is gone to plant the new tree, 
because it's going to take a long time to grow to be the tree that we need it to be maybe go okay so in a month we're going to plant we're going to take that tree so plant that tree now yeah and then let it establish and then go okay we can take mm -hmm. these now to yeah, do yeah. use for what we need and that way there's more of a balance than going yeah we have a field of seedlings that we're hoping takes and if not the tree's already gone so we're diminished our oxygen level yeah yeah <laughs> so you know th that's that connection that connection whatever we do affects the whole world, our whole planet, our planet Earth, and it ripples out into the universe because we are all one. We are all one. And we all need each other. We and do. We just, yeah. And we just need to remember our connections. Yeah. So with that being said, I am going to say good night to Nancy. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you to everyone in the chat room and those that watched. And wherever you are in the world, make it a blessed day, blessed evening, blessed afternoon. Enjoy the day. Fill it with love and joy. And like Nancy says, you know, remember, you know, we're connected to everything. So maybe before you react to a situation, think about, you know, I'm connected to this person. So how would I want to be treated in this situation mm -hmm. and maybe that'll help raise our vibration up if we stop to think about how we're connected and we're all one yeah. so thank you everyone thank you good night everyone good night